grab my hatchet. Alright, so welcome to the Jenny Wheat House Museum. Again, my name is George. I will give you this little introduction before I let you to the house. You may take photos, flash is fine, just no video, no audio recording. Um, so what is, well, where is everyone from? Kansas. Kansas! Wow, you're a long ways from home. Yep. Whereabouts in Kansas? Great Bend, right in the middle. Okay, in the middle. Um, where about you? Jersey. Jersey! Alright. Maine. Maine! Whereabouts in Maine? Well, right in the middle of Maine. Okay. My friend's dad lives out near Bangor. Bangor. Yep. Yep. Bangor. He talks about the fiddleheads all the time. I get to try them, but it's on my list. Uh, what does everyone here know about Jenny Wade? She got killed baking bread. <laughs> she did. Anything else? She's the, only, she's the only civilian only that died killed. in the war. Ah, now there we go. That's <clears> the one we looked for. <clears throat> The first one was correct, but we looked for that. So yes, Jenny Wade was the only civilian shot and killed during the Battle of Gettysburg. Town population was 2,400. Now the house you're looking at was built as a duplex. Jenny Wade says to Georgia, rented this half the duplex out. The McLean family would have rented the other half the duplex out. Five days prior to the battle, Georgia would end up giving birth off to the side parlor here to Lewis Kennan McClellan. And the first person to make it up to this house to take care of her daughter is going to be their mother, Mrs. Wade. Because George's husband, he was off fighting a war in Virginia at the time, so he would not have been here. But Mrs. Wade will come take care of Georgia. Now, on the morning of July the 1st, 1863, she is now going to send word down the street for Jenny Wade, Jenny's younger brother, Harry, and Isaac Brinkerhoff. A neighbor boy crippled and carried a crutch to make their way up to this house, not just to take care of Georgia. But think in the back of your mind, what is now taking place north side of town that morning of July the 1st, 1863? There's a battle. War has started here in town. And Mrs. Wade, plus all the other civilians in town, are getting quite concerned because that battle is now slowly approaching downtown. That's where the family home was located. They're not going to know that by 4 p.m. that battle is going to reach this side of town. This is the outskirts. The Union will occupy that high ground. That is the end of the fish hook, the Union line. And the Confederates will now have complete control of the town of Gettysburg. And this house, right where we're standing, this was called No Man's Land. Back in 1863, hence all the bullet holes. Straight marks, nicks and dings, they're all original. They estimate the house itself was hit between 100 to 150 individual times during those three days. Now out of all of these holes, this is the one that's important to us. That is where the bullet entered that killed Jenny on the morning of July the 3rd. Confederate sharpshooter two blocks in here at the Bodsworth house will shoot a bullet. That bullet will go through not just one, but two doors. It's going to hit Jenny within her left shoulder blade, piercing her heart and miss the Union soldier, by the way. And she will die instantly. I did forget to mention that during the three days here, she was helping the family, taking care of Georgia, and the Union cause bread, biscuits, and water. But that's where my self guided tour ends, and that's where your fully guided tour will begin. Could you that bullet hole out? Sure. There you go. Alright, so before I go any further, here's one for you. And ah, where you started from, that was George's garden. And Jenny would have been buried within a light shallow grave within George's garden. Six months later, she'll be reinterned German Reform Church down the street off of High Street. Then one year from that date, the family will purchase a plot of land to where she's currently buried today above us at the Evergreen Cemetery. Let's look for her statue and her perpetual flag. Now Jenny's only one of two women in the entire United States that have this distinction and honor of having a perpetual flag. 
Now, would anyone like to try to guess who number two is? You got it. Wow. Well, that was a good guess. Most people don't guess that quickly. Not a few, but you're right. Betsy Ross of Philadelphia made the very first American flag. 1776, 13 stars, 13 colonies in America. Once you're all said and done, exit the cellar. You're going to have right back to that gift shop. That's where if you have any questions for us, or you would like a map or directions that will get you to Jenny's grave, we do have those readily available, and we'll make sure you get them. All right. So before I let you in, you find this is bullet hole number one.